Hey everyone, Steve here for Church 365. Welcome to our global worship weekend from the beach. It's summertime and it's so great to be here. Today I'm going to be talking a bit from 2 Corinthians chapters 5 to 9, but I want to start off with a story. There was a father, his daughter, and the rest of their family went to a park in the summertime. It was really hot and the little girl turned to her dad and said, Daddy, can we buy everyone some ice cream? And he said, sure. So they went, he gave her a $20 bill. They went over to the ice cream truck and she bought freezies for everyone. They go and they handed out the ice cream freezies to all of her friends and she was so excited. And afterwards she looked up at her father and said, Daddy, I bought ice cream for everyone. He looked at her and said, yes, sweetie. Yes, you did. I want to talk to you today about giving. And that story there is an amazing example of what our Heavenly Father is like. Part of the reason that we're down here by the lake today is because in preparing for this message, I was spending some time with God and reading scripture, and I felt like he showed me a picture of he was by the lake and he grabbed a jar or a cup and he dipped it in the water and he held it up and said, Stephen, how much water is here? And I thought to myself, I know the answer to this. The jar is half full. And he said, no, Stephen, there is so much more. There is so much more. In my hand, I'm holding half a jar of water. But right beside me are millions upon millions upon millions of jars of water. And it's right here. And that is what our Heavenly Father is like. I'm going to start here from reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 8 in the NIV, and then I'm gonna read it in the Passion as well. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things and in all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. I'm going to read those same verses again in the Passion Translation. Here's my point. A stingy sower will reap a meager harvest, but the one who sows with a generous spirit will reap an abundant harvest. Let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving, all because God loves hilarious, outrageous generosity. Yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace. I'm going to read that again. God is more than ready. Your Father in heaven, my Father in heaven, is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace so that you will have more than enough of everything, every moment and in every way. He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing that you do. You know, I've heard a lot of messages over the years on giving. And honestly, at first, when when Jordan and Sonia asked me to speak on this section between uh, chapters uh, 5 and 11, and I saw the giving chapter, I I immediately said, oh, I'm not going to speak on that because people, you know, oh, they're just, this is a tithing, one of those tithing messages, you know, click the link below. Don't worry, there's not a link below at this moment. Um, But it's funny that God led me back to this part of scripture because just like the example in the story with the little girl and just like the example with the cup and the lake it's really not ours to begin with generosity and giving whether it's of our time of our compassion of our finances it's his to begin with and it flows through us Money just happens to be something that's really easy to do math on. It's hard to know how much emotional love I poured out into you, but I can look at my bank account and know how much money I gave. But either way, it, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, all those things come from the Father. Everything that we need, every dollar bill, every piece of clothing, God is the one who provides it and he is extravagant. We just get to hold it in our hands. Just like that little girl was holding that money in her hand that her father gave her. It wasn't hers, it was her father's, but he entrusted it to her by the ice cream 
for everyone and they all got to share in the joy. That's what you and I get to live. So the money in your bank account, it isn't yours. The money in my bank account, it isn't mine. I've surrendered my all to him. He is my Lord and my Savior. And that means whatever I can see here in this jar, I may only see this much, but that doesn't mean that's all that he has. And if I will trust him with this much, he has this much which he can pour in in return. Giving was demonstrated most extravagantly at the cross. Two or three days um, before starting to prepare for this message, I was having communion and I felt God challenged me that at some level I had viewed the cross as that Jesus survived the cross and he just he managed to get past it. And he challenged me and he said, Stephen, it wasn't a barely got by. I didn't barely survive the cross. It was absolute, total, and complete victory. And I just, you know, I'm a fan of, of action movies and things. I could just see this picture in my mind of Jesus. It says in Ephesians that he descended into the darkest places into hell and he won, um, defeated all foes and, and won everything back for us. I could just see like this hooded figure walk into the middle of a dark room and all, you know, the devil and demon just like cheering, like, oh, we've got him where we want him. And all of a sudden, poof, it's the reveal. No, what they thought, what the devil and darkness thought was a trap for Jesus was actually their very own trap. Because the cross, it wasn't just, we just barely got by. Whew, the father and the son, like, Jesus, high five, we survived that. No, it was the plan from before the beginning of time. It is absolute, total, and complete victory. Jesus has won everything. All the fullness of God now has been, we have access to. The veil was torn from the top to the bottom. Jesus didn't say, oh, we barely made it. No, he's declared, it is finished. And the veil tore from the top to the bottom in the temple. And now we have full access to the, to God and the Holy Spirit himself lives inside of me. I'm getting excited. I hope I have to slow down my speaking. I'm getting fired up. It's Jesus has won it all. This was his plan. And I realized that when, because at some level I had viewed the cross because physically, like how could you even survive? Like just, just getting past that is, a, is, is a miraculous and amazing. That when I was asking God, to help me in some situations that I was viewing that the answer would get me by, but not make me victor an overcomer. Like he'd make me a survivor, not an overcomer. Not in every situation, but a number of situations I realized that I was believing that lie and God was bringing that up that I had to repent of. And I don't know about you, but there's probably areas in your life, just like there were in mine, where you viewed things and I viewed things that God's going to help me survive it, but I don't know if he's going to help me have to overcome it, to have total victory. My, my children may not go to hell, but are they really going to follow after God passionately? I, I may have enough to eat, but will I always be hungry? Those type of questions. And there are seasons where things are hard, but God promises us that he is more than enough. Just like this jar, it's not half full. There is so much more. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says, We live by faith, not by sight. Verse 17, 18 in, in that same chapter 5 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, you and I, when we made him our Lord and Savior, we said, Jesus, I believe in you. I give you my life. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I give it all to you. I surrender all to you. When we do that, we are in Christ. A new creation has come. We are made brand new. The old is gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. He didn't just pick us up out of hell and put us just over the fence. It's like, okay, you're not going to hell now. You're not going to die. No, he picked us up and drew us to himself in Christ, through Christ, and then gave us the ministry of reconciliation. God made him who was no sin to become sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And I've read that verse thousands of times. And it's, it's, it's so big and it's so amazing. Sometimes it can be hard to believe. But it says here, so that in him 
we might become the righteousness of God, the fullness of God He wants to, to give us and flow through us because He is in us. And He's called us to this ministry of reconciliation. And I don't know about you, but if I want someone to introduce me, I, I don't want J- Pastor Jordan to, to introduce me to his friends. Yeah, this Steve guy, he sometimes he can be, he can be quite nice. If that's my introduction, they're not going to expect good things from me. They're not, they're not going to expect. Yeah, you know, once, once he actually shared, uh, you know, his, his lawn tractor with me. Yeah, he actually did that once. That's not a, a very encouraging thought. God wants to, to us to, to demonstrate and to be ministers of reconciliation, recognizing how high, how wide, and how deep his love is for us. That we live by faith, not by sight. Um, verses 14 and 15 from 2 Corinthians. For it is Christ's love that fuels our passion and holds us tightly because we are convinced that he has given his life for us. That means that all died with him so that those who live no longer live self-absorbed lives, but lives that are poured out for him, the one who died for us and lives again. Verse 17, 18. And God has made all things new, again, reconciling us to himself and giving us the ministry of reconciling to others. We started this talking about giving. The rain is is coming. The sky is is giving (laughs) at, at the moment. But I encourage you that as you go about your week this week, that you wouldn't look at your bank account. You wouldn't look at what the person who is in front of you, what they have done for you and how you should treat them. But you would look at Jesus. That you would look at your heavenly Father and the extravagant love and abundance he has poured out for you. And ask him, Father, what would you have me do with this? I don't have to fear that this water is going to run out. If I pour it out, I'm not out of water because there are millions upon millions upon millions of jars of water right there that my Father has provided. I can trust him to provide. And so my prayer for you today is that, and myself, that you and I, that we would know today how high and how wide and how deep the Father's love is for you. That there is more than enough. Because Jesus died and rose again, there is abundantly more than enough. He didn't just survive the cross. He won absolute, total and complete victory. He's not just gonna help you get by and not be quite as depressed or quite as scared or quite as lonely, but he wants to fill you to overflowing with the fullness of himself, that you and I are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I bless you right now and I bless myself right now for eyes and our ears to be open to to receive him and to believe. I bless you to believe just like Jesus believes in the Father, that we would believe in him. And I bless you today to be filled with courage, to know that the reason the Father had me pour half this out was so that I could fill it up again. Don't be afraid if your jar is half full because, and he asked you to pour it out because the reason he asked you to pour it out is so he could fill it up even more. I want to thank you again for being with us. If this message has touched you and you want to to reach out to us, you need some encouragement or prayer, please do. We would love to partner in seeing what God is doing in your life. If you need a prophetic word or encouragement, reach out. We had an amazing testimony a couple months ago of a woman who just had um, twins and they were going through um, some health issues. And and unbeknownst to, to us, there was a prophetic word praying for someone with twins and we saw God do some amazing work in their life. God is moving all around the world and he's moving in you and I. God bless you.